Hey there. Uh, my name's David Tosh and I'm the research coordinator um, for Nash Museums Northern Ireland. Um, I, you've been hearing today about the wider Takabuti project and uh, I, I was fortunate enough to become um, part of that uh, almost three years ago now. Um, so it's great to get to this point uh, where we can showcase to you guys everything that's gone on. So thanks for coming along today and uh, listening to what uh, the wider teams found out from our little Takabuti. But today uh, I'm going to try and talk to you about our uh, Takabuti's legacy. Um, you know, what what has Takabuti's arrival uh, in Belfast all those years ago brought to Belfast, Northern Ireland and the wider island of Ireland? So I'm going to um, uh, talk about a few things that I think that are important parts of our legacy. So um, Takabuti, as we heard earlier today, um, arrived in Belfast near the beginning of the modern era of Egyptomania in Western Europe. Uh, this is a period that arguably started um, following Napoleon's invasion of Egypt in 1798. Subsequent publications, such as a description of Egypt um, and the arrival of objects taken from Egypt following Britain's invasion in 1802, opened up Egypt to the West and led to greater interest in the country and its culture. Um, so since then, Takabuti's influence has arguably grown and her presence has shaped how the museums see themselves and more importantly, how the public views the museums. Um, in that time, she's played a role in educating the public about ancient Egypt and has had a hand in satisfying the interest in Egypt that has periodically peaked over the past 200 years whenever significant events have occurred, such as the arrival of Cleopatra's needle in London to the discovery of Tutankhamun. So hopefully you're going to agree with me at the end of this, that uh, Takabuki's legacy falls into three different areas. So I'm going to... So first legacy, I would argue, is... Um, is linked to the museum's identity. Um, ultimately, what would museums be without collections? They'd just be buildings, really, wouldn't they? So, you know, collections are, are intertwined with the identity of the museums. Um, and this is very much evident in the case of, of Takabuti. Takabuti is called three locations in Belfast, um, her home, uh, and I'd argue her presence there you know, has been uh, intertwined with her identity. It's very much the case now um, with her current home, the Ulster Museum, but I kind of want to show, um, you know, how the, the, the museum has promoted and marketed its collections wherever it has been uh, in Belfast. Um, Takabuti's been there, um, and Takabuti's been part of advertising those collections and, and and what it is and stuff. So, so Takabuti's first home, which you probably heard about earlier from Eileen, um, was the old museum building, building on College Square North in Belfast. This was the home of the Belfast Natural History and Philosophical Society. Um, following our unwrapping, she was on display for a number of days to the public, as was advertised in the local papers. And uh, subsequent to that, you know, she was available to see by appointment and uh, without appointment on um, uh, the, the public holiday Easter, um, when the society's uh, wider collections were made available to the public. So these are the kind of advertisements that would have went up in papers and around Belfast, um, advertising uh, these open days um, to the wider public, although you did have to pay to go in. Um, like these are examples of some that we have in our collection, but there are others that you know where she features more prominently um, in the adverts for for the museum. So the second home, uh, second place Takabuti called home, um, was Belfast Central Library, um, which used to be um, Belfast's uh, public art gallery and museum. Um, this became Takabuti's home 
or around about 1910, when the Belfast Corporation acquired the Belfast Natural History and Philosophical Society's collections, um, because the, built, the old museum that you saw there, um, it was falling into disrepair. Um, the society didn't have enough money to fix it up and they were running out of space. So the Belfast Corporation acquired the collections and um, a lot of the collections went on display in this building here. Um, Takabuti and the rest of the ethnographic collections went and display in what became known as the Granger Room, it's still known as the Granger Room, is up here um, in the top of the building. And um, this, is, this is an example of, of her on display in the Granger Room, not exactly what, sure what time, but, you know, early 1910s. Um, so the big change that uh, came with Takabuti moving to this building is she was much more accessible to the public. Unfortunately, we don't have any advertising material from, from the time um, she was in the building. Um, but we do know um, that uh, while she was there, there was greater exposure um, of her to the public. This museum was open for at least 300 days a year, and it was free to the public. Um, I think in 1913, 14, there was about 137,000 visitors to this building. So this would increase the exposure of the people of Belfast to who Takabuti was and to the wider collections that would eventually become uh, come to the Ulster Museum. Um, you know, uh, those numbers of visitors, you know, continued. Um, like in 1922, um, there was 140,000 visitors to, to this building um, and interest was peaked um, in the collections because of the discovery of Tutankhamun um, at the time. So this led to, again, greater interest in the, the Egyptian collection. They put on a, a specific in, exhibition of, all, of the Egyptian material um, in this position, in this location. And uh, yeah, a lot of people were exposed at the time. Now, the final um, place that Takabuti uh, has ended up calling home in Belfast is, uh, is the Elster Museum. So um, the Elster Museum was completed in 1929, just this section of the building, because they ran out of money to build the rest of uh, this neoclassical structure. This, this was added uh, in, the, in the 60s, but we won't talk about that. Um, so this is Takabuti's third and final home. Um, and here, you know, Takabuti still features very much in how we market the museum. You know, we've, we ourselves have identified her as one of the top things um, to come and see in the Elston Museum. Uh, and when you go on the internet and search for the Elston Museum, you know, all these sites, Takabuti and the Egyptian room feature very prominently uh, in the kind of offering that we um, we can give to people. So, you know, so it's uh, it's got to a point with the way that the museum has been marketed over the years, you know, and how we advertise our collections that, um, you know, when we spoke to visitors and said, you know, um, what sort of, what, what objects in the museum do you uh, identify with the Elsie Museum? And, you know, Takabuti was in the top 10 of objects that visitors typically associate with the Elsie Museum. And she was number four in things that people would recommend to go and see. So you can see that uh, the power of marketing in museum has, has led to, um, Takabuti featuring in the memory of people within Belfast and Northern Ireland. So, yeah, arguably she's, she is intertwined with uh, the identity um, of the museum and very much how the public sees the Elster Museum these days. Now, second legacy, um, I'd argue, Takabuti has left behind, or, or maintains rather, is... Um, is our impact on Egyptology in Ireland. Um, yeah, so, you know, as I said, market, marketing of the museum and advertising of events certainly raises the profile of the presence of ancient Egypt, but her accessibility has also undoubtedly had a role in sustaining this over the years. Now, 
Unlike in Britain, opportunities for the public to see Egyptian collections in the islands of Ireland are few and far between. So, oops, sorry. So here you go. I had a quick look on the internet a wee while ago to see what museums in Britain um, actually had uh, mummies uh, on public display. So I was able to find, uh, I think it was 35 museums have them on public display in Scotland, uh, England and Wales, while on the island of Ireland, there's only two uh, collections where Egyptian mummies are on display. The National Museum of Ireland in Dublin and the Ulster Museum in Belfast. Now, UCC, University College Cork, has a mummy, but it's not on display. We also think Trinity College Dublin also has mummies, but they're not on display. And there are other locations around the island where there are Egyptian collections. But this, you know, these are the only two locations um, where you can come like face to face with ancient Egypt. So here, sorry, right. Well, this is Takabuti, who you've all heard about today. This is Lady Tent Denebu, um, one of four Egyptian mummies on display uh, at National Museums Northern Ireland. She's the most um, celebrated and visible mummy. Um, and here's the, the, the mummy from University College Cork. This is an interesting story because they didn't realise they had it. He was found under um, a lecture theatre when it was getting refurbished, but they probably don't want us to talk about that. Um, so, um, so yeah, there's there's limited opportunity to, for the public to um, visit Egyptian collections in Ireland and come face to face with that with that part of history. So, you know, uh, Takabuti has been on display for uh, nigh on 186 years, and it's one of the few opportunities for the public to actually put a face to ancient Egypt and, you know, associate with that period to realise, you know, that it was people and it's not just objects, which, you know, are large parts of Egyptology collections. It really brings it to life. Now, arguably, Takabuti's had a bigger role than Lady Tent Denebu, because T Lady Tent Denebu's only been on display since the mid-1990s. Takabuti has been on uh, display since our wrapping in some shape or form since uh, 1834 so it's 186 years so um yeah so her contribution to the awareness of ancient egypt to the people of northern Ireland, has been further magnified in her role within education at the Ulster museum so since the mid 1990s ancient egypt has been a feature of the primary school curriculum in northern ireland Consequently, the Elsa Museum has offered Northern Irish schools, uh, Northern Irish school children, the opportunity to visit uh, the museum and learn more about the ancient, uh, more about ancient Egypt and Takabuti. Um, Takabuti has very much been a, a central part of this, as you can see from uh, ad current advertising here for Museum on Our Move. So this is our education program that we're operating during lockdown, where basically the museum comes to your classroom. Um, so like before the pandemic happened, uh, roughly just under 4,000 uh, school kids would have visited the Ulster Museum each year um, to take part in uh, the education offerings. We offer a variety of um, classes um, about different topics, but 78% uh, of uh, those coming uh, to the Ulster Museum, primary school kids, um, came to learn about Egypt and taking part in one of these two um, these classes. So, um, yeah, so over the years, Takabuti and our education program has done its best to engender interest in ancient Egypt within, you know, Northern Irish and arguably Irish society. You know, as I said before, such a visit for kids, you know, gives them the more opportunity to come face to face with the past. And, you know, Takabuti puts a face to the period and makes it much more real than any object could. You know, it's really interesting to see, you know, Coptic jars and alabaster pots and things like that. But nothing can, you know, replace actually seeing a real, uh, a real person from that period. And Takabuti, you know, fills that. I know with my kids, you know, speaking to them after they visited the museum, some kids were absolutely absorbed, but 
some kids were absolutely horrified by it, but it still, you know, it brings it to life. So I think finally, uh, the last part of Takabu A's legacy is her is our is our contribution to research. Um, so as I think was mentioned earlier, um, Edward Hinks, the renowned seriologist, um, who was known for his work on cuneiforms, um, was present at the unwrapping of Takabuti in 1834. And he was the first person to give us an indication of uh, who Tak of Takabuti's name, Kabuti. Um, there's no evidence of it, but I like to think that his work on Takabuti contributed in some small way to his, his important contribution to our understanding of hieroglyphics. So um, in 1846, you know, he published an attempt to ascertain the number, names and powers of the letters of the hieroglyphics. So this is an important um, piece um, in our understanding of hieroglyphics. And as I say, I like to think, you know, his work in Takabuti and other things hopefully contributed to, contributed to this work. He was also actually present for the um, unwrapping of Chesmond Perrett, who is another mummy in, in our collections. She was unwrapped in 1850. Um, and you can actually find uh, his writings of the unwrapping. Um, and he, again, he was the first person to, to give us a name of who Chesmond Perrett was and the other people and offerings made on, on, um, on our coffin. Um, so, so, um, Takabuti's profile, for example, the book, the, the news stories, etc., has uh, led to greater awareness of our Egypt co Egyptology collections around the, uh, around the world. And although small, of only about 500 objects, um, it does have interesting parts to it. And um, without the exposure that Takabuti has, has given us in it, I don't think we would have had the same interest or research inquiries about um, working on our collections. So this is undoubtedly, you know, um, a part of Tag Takabuti's legacy. You know, without without this, you know, <laughs> these parts of our collections would not be being used. Um, and this is the prime role of the museum is to have its collections be used and contribute to research, you know, so. Um, so finally, yeah, Takabuti's legacy kind of um, is manifested in events like today. Um, hopefully today's seminar has demonstrated how work in a single mummy can contribute to a greater understanding of a society thousands of years old and how it can contribute to our understanding and taming of issues for the future. We hope, I mean, this is the end of the, the the, the Takabuti project for now, but we're hopeful that given time as techniques to um, extract DNA or, you know, the development of proteomics um, continues that, you know, we'll eventually be able to start a new Takabuti project and her legacy will continue on into the future. But um, yeah, I'd just like to thank you all for coming along today and listen to me ramble on um, about Takabuti, but uh, yeah. Thanks very much and uh, I hope you enjoyed the day. <laughs>